Chris for a Gary player. Uh, DDFNM shot June 1st, 1993. And it's chilly out. Yeah, actually, I have lost about 20 pounds. I really wasn't trying to, but I've been playing so much golf. You know, it destroys you. <laughs> How you doing, dude? Where is he? Is he here yet? Here now. Is he coming to this site? Yes. Here. All right. You're talking about going out to number six? Shot up here. Yeah, whatever, wherever these guys are going. Yeah, we don't want to take You're going to Neville Wood and yeah. shoot about 104. Yeah, you're probably right. That's probably right. <laughs> Thanks. Now that you put my, that in my mind, Jeez, Holly, you're man. probably right. I had a 42 down in the, in the front here. Yeah. 42, 40, 48. I beat Albert. Did you? I'm doing the back. 42 and 48? Yeah, 48. That's right. That's great. <laughs> Hi, Gary. Good morning, Gary. How are you? Nice to see you again. Thank you. Well, I'm excited to come and see this now. Gary, I mean, Joe's got me so hyped up. <laughs> oh, you're like. How are you today? Nice to see you again, sir. Nice to Very see you. How are you? Well, thank you. I'm wonderful. Good. Good morning. Wonderful. Let's get the hell out of here. Let's get the hell out of here. Can we get this out of the way? Can you set this to play? You can put this in your pocket. Go back on. Okay. Put this onto your shirt. Okay. Perfect. All right. There we go. You don't need that windscreen today, huh? Great. Perfect. And it's great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, you're set. I'm just saying we. Uh, I'm so excited to come and see this because uh, you know this is such a great golf course, and, uh, and Joe is so excited. I mean, he just he thinks this is the best golf course we've ever done. Yeah, he really does. Which, uh, so I'm anxious to see what's happening this morning. Let me say hello to Tom and Hartley. How are you, Tom? How are you, Hartley? Good, good to see you, nice sir. To see you. How are you, Hartley? Fine, All right. Great. Tom, how are you? Fine, thank you. Good. Yeah. Oh, I think I'll just put the well, boots on. Yeah, I'm going to put mine on, too. I think you'll need it. <laughs> yeah, I might have to use those sneakers. These uh, feel like I'm walking on the moon a bit. Let's make them style. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, because I'm running. I've got yeah. too much damn lace. You know. You see what I'm even doing? I'm even wrapping it around like that, Jeff. Oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah. Nice, nice. 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 Where are you coming in from? Uh, I was in, um, you know, when you're in a different town nearly every day. You we were in uh, Hartford, Connecticut yesterday. Oh. New Jersey, Hartford. Hartford. 
Oh, were you in Jersey? Did you play in that senior yes. event of the weekend? Yeah. How about the Arnold Palmer hitting a guy in the head? I didn't you see that, that shot? No. Oh, I do, I do a funny plays of the week thing. I mean, it's not funny after yeah. when he did it, but the guy's okay. Yes. But it is unbelievable. Really? I mean, he nailed him. He's like a 200 yards, too. Oh, my goodness. I wow. never saw that. And, and you know what? The guy was part of his, his army. Oh, he's yeah. been a fan for 30 years. <laughs> is that right? That's Arnie's right. Army. He might have a lawsuit a now. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably walking around saying, look, look at my bruise. <laughs> In 1970, Gary recorded two songs. What were they? Oh, one was called uh, uh, Deep in the Heart of Texas. Uh, one was called Jenny with my daughter. And then there was uh, a Sing in the Blues. Deep in the Heart of Texas. Sounds good, Roger. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, yeah, we, we said this to a friend of mine in Palm Springs. He says, you sing? He says, remind me not to buy the record. But the guy wasn't hurt. Yeah. No, no, well, he had to go to the hospital. Yeah. They took him to the hospital, he was bleeding. Please make sure I was looking for Jim Applegate here. Yeah, he's coming yeah, a little, he's coming a little wide here. Oh, well, that's... Joe Duca. Joe Duca, hi, Leonard Norris, nice, Place nice to meet you. Sir. Leonard, you have in this course. No, sir. Well, you're going to see a dandy. This is Jeff Myers. Yeah, we're yes, we're just making. You're going to see you. Six holes down in, uh, I also like to see the guys teeing up at the top there, right. coming down this way. Right. You've just got to make this out of bounds. You just put a few white stakes do along there, and it's known that you may not hit there because, and that's very important that your um, your pro or somebody tells guys, look, that's out of bounds, or they. You may, or on your cart or something, or right here, because you don't want to get a lawsuit pumping down there. Hell, that is spectacular. Now, I'm a little bit confused now, Joe. Uh, we got the lake here, we got the lake on the left, we got the lake on the other side of that green as well. No, that's just water that's in, is that the, just in, in the green cavity. I see. Yeah. One nice thing that's about uh, getting all this rain, you can sure see where your problems are going to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have a lot of, we haven't put all our drainage basins. We no. Any of those yeah. 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 I'm here, stage by stage, and you see what was here. And that's why I said, Gary, keep before and, and after books. Because people won't believe it. Yeah, They'll think that this, you're already getting the feeling, even though we've been here, that that was like that. Yeah, that's right. You get <laughs> You know? And to have in your grill room pictures of before and after, it's fabulous. That is, that is... It's 450, this one. Yes. And the green's uh, 7,400 square feet. Big green. Yeah. See, I like that bunker. And uh, the first thing I said to Joe, you know, can, if we did go in there, some long hitter, has he got a shot out of there? Yeah, you, you know? Yeah, straight to the green from that bunker. Yeah. You don't have to work the ball. <laughs> and even if you have to work it a little bit, it's not bad, but then when you get I like it. Along that lake, there's a bunker that's all along a waste bunker that yeah. runs the entire length of the lake. But look at these tees, too. Absolutely fantastic. Joe, how about uh, the cart paws? Are you able to, you know? We're hiding them. You're hiding them? Yeah. That's great. You know, it's it goes back in the trees. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna see. You know, it's amazing what one mound, what one little mound does. It covers 50 yards of cart paws sometimes. You know. Now, that is uh, lovely, nice, plenty of room for the average guy. I mean, that is great. Okay, John. Okay, Freddie, you ready? Take over. Now, what number is that coming back there now? Gee, you've got to be very confused with all the ways chopped and chained. This will be 13. <laughs> Man, every time I'm coming. <laughs> That's 13. I was yeah. a new your architect today. said so these numbers have been changed or rechanged or rechanged. He said, even I'm confused. That's 12. That's 13. Okay. This is 6 and 7's on the other side. <laughs> oh, I love the idea of standing and seeing those guys putt on that green. Oh, I love that too. Isn't that nice? I love it. It's worked out really well with No, the half putt's on way on top of the hill. Amazing, John, when you come out here. It's and a beautiful, I mean, and this is absolutely beautiful. I haven't a chance to see it progress too over a year. Yeah, if I'm a bit of golf course in this. Really, I mean, we've country. I mean, just from what I've seen as we progressed, but you know, I've got to see it 
we first got to do it. But I mean, the, I mean, when you look at this, I mean, this is this is it's an I don't know how you can ever say what is the best, but I can tell you. Um, to host a tournament. Yes, I think that they'd be able to hold a tournament here very easy. I'd like to ask Joe how many people. Joe, if having a tournament here. It would be very easy for people to see and walk around. Don't oh, you think? definitely. Every, there's a lot of amphitheater yeah. green. It has a stadium. Yeah, it has a stadium feel to it as far as the green complex. Everything's looking down. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. You ready? It's taking me about five minutes with a smudge. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's like I'm like doing an interview in cement. <laughs> Gary, I may be here for the next half an hour. Well, you ready? <laughs> Gary, obviously, this is just a very impressive piece of land. Uh, John, I can tell you from the very first time I saw this piece of ground, I said, um, I really sincerely believe we can build one of the very best golf courses in the country here. And I think this is definitely going to be done. If you stand here now and you see what is actually taking place, I'd love people to come out and see this. You know, one picture is worth a million words, and it's very easy to stand here and talk about it. But this is something sensational. What makes a, a piece of ground a good piece of ground for a spectacular golf course? Well, I think, first of all, trees. We built a golf course in, uh, well, let me give you an example. We built a golf course in Palm Springs. It cost about $11 million by the time everything was done. It was a flat piece of ground. We had to create elevations. We had to bring in a tremendous amount of trees. You come here, you've got all these natural elevations. It's always easier for a golfer to hit downhill than to hit uphill. Plus, you've got all these marvelous trees. Now, if you go and buy these, how do you put a number on? You cannot put a number on these trees. And that's why, if you look out here, we've tried to, my brother being an environmentalist, have a great feeling for improving this ground, saving every tree we can, putting water holes here, increasing the, the, the wildlife, really being 100% uh, concerned about environment. Plus the fact that this piece of ground is going to give so many millions of people great pleasure. And I think that's something forward to playing in. But this is the great thing that Arnold Jack and I have been great friends for all these years. And we've also competed against each other in golf course design, which is fabulous. And also now we're competing against each other in uh, manufacturing of golf clubs. You know, we have our own line of golf clubs on the market. And I think this is great. I think this is what made America such a great country, is competition. Gary, you've built golf courses all over the world, and you have said that this could end up being one of the finest. I mean, do you really believe that, that you can make maybe one of your signature golf courses here in Western Pennsylvania? Well, John, we've built over 100, uh, counting the golf courses we're doing now. By the time we finish those, we will have done 140 golf courses worldwide, and we've been involved in all kinds of territories and countries. And I really think this could turn out, this could turn out to be uh, one of our very, very best. Why is it? Well, because of this great elevation, because of the trees, just the topography, and uh, it's just got something. This place, it oozes with character. You know, you've got to have a great piece of ground. Uh, sometimes we're not given a good piece of ground, then we've really got to sit down and make it a good piece of ground. But here, well, um, if I may use uh, a pun, I think if Ray Charles was an architect, I think he could do a good job there. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Gary. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. Beautiful. I gotta get myself out of the mud. We're almost to his height. How are you, Jim? Nice to see you. Joe says, what a nice job you guys are doing. Thank you very much. Very well. Leg left when it gets to the back of the course. Did you see the hole where we made the big cut? That's the one. Uh -huh. Absolutely, that's it. Yeah. And, 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 just, and the ruggedness. Yeah. I'm just really impressed also with a lot of the greens and the fact that the, 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 it slopes down to the greens. Yeah, the amphitheaters. Yeah, the amphitheaters yeah. around the greens. There's, I know there's a part, I think it's number 11, the part 3 and 11. Right. And, and then there's the one I was talking about, which I think is going to be a spectacular hole. The right. part 4, yeah. dog leg left, across yeah. the lake. Let, yeah. That is going to be absolutely beautiful. That's the one way in the back. Right. right. Uh, well, I love this, this long par 5. Yeah. yeah. The one that wraps around yeah. and goes up the yeah. hill. Yeah. That is going to be spectacular. Well, really, uh, you know, it's very difficult when you, uh, you're trying to contain your uh, enthusiasm, but really, this is going to be phenomenal. Why well, join? Oh, did you? Absolutely. Well, I yeah, tell you. As soon as I, tell you. I saw that, uh, and I what think for what they're charging, yeah. I think it's it's the biggest gift I've ever seen. Yeah. By the time this is finished, I, I, this man's got a great imagination. Too, yeah, you are doing a great job. He really, really are. you know, when I when Joe and I talk, he can, he can get the feeling that I'm trying to get across. Yeah. You know, he's really an enthusiastic worker, and uh, it 
it's so important to oh, communicate. I, I with think it's laid feeling. out so well. It was real impressive. Is when you first saw this land a year ago. Like Hartley told me about it two years ago, and I came by and drove. There were no signs. There was nothing. And you kind of walked out. You kind of said, "I wonder what's back there." It's right. Hilly, but you really yes. carved out some flat holes. Number ten. Yes. Yeah. Number you know? ten's a great hole. That's it, one of my favorites. It is phenomenal. Is the shot of the dog went right over the lake, and it's flat. And you have big landing areas, but you have a lot of trees. trees. I, I, it's and it's you have no, such flexibility here. You know, if a pro comes here, you can bring any pro in the world here, and you put him on the backs, he's got a test. If you bring a hacker, put him way forward there, and they've got plenty of room to land on, they've got beauty, they've got great contrast. Right. You know, that to me is... going to be spectacular. If you can have the width here for landing areas, we have very generous yeah. landing areas. Very it's important. Long, it's a long, long yeah. It's a good test. The Julio's every car. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and also what we've done here, which we, uh, one of our mottos, is to make the greens playable. Uh, there's a revolution taking place in golf architecture. I listen to the pros all the time, and I've always believed this since I was a young man. You cannot have these undulating greens. I mean, we cannot handle it. How the hell can a weekend golfer come out here? He doesn't hit many greens, and when he does hit a green, he doesn't want to have a putt from here and hit it out there like Augusta or somewhere. I agree with you. You know, there's a lot of courses around here that are 6,500, 6,300 from the gold tees. And how they make up for that is with these shelf greens. Ah, just, that's a weakness. Exactly. That's a weakness. you got 7,000 yards to play with, make the greens nice and fair. Absolutely. And you guys are doing it absolutely right. Thanks. Yeah, and, well, that's and, nice. I mean, Gary has also shown me the, uh, my big concern is the practice facility. I do a lot of practice. And Gary showed me the recent plans for the practice facility. Now. Yeah, it does. But it's, it's going to be very important in a first class practice facility. Because you know when you mentioned Neville Wood, you know what the first thing Super Saiyan? Practice facility. Absolutely. And you'll be hitting down. That's right. That's a dream. You've got a practice area. No, that's the first thing It's pretty say. nice there. It's the very nice there. The first thing they say is the practice facility yeah, is right. Yeah, they got some very nice yeah. targets out there in the rain. You can, you, you can build a good yeah. reputation yeah. immediately by putting yeah. a nice practice. I know, I, know that's, I know you're going to do that. We're going to because ours will be where you're hitting down. And people love to hit down. Anytime you hit up, Cutting yeah, absolutely. Is, People cannot get their head up. The lady can stand the practice hitter, just a normal shot, it looks like it's going like hell. Makes her feel good. We want to make people, what you've got to have is a golf course that looks awesome and yet is playable. <coughs> Well, I'm really glad to hear you said that there's amphitheater capability. Yeah. yeah. It really help you if you come out of the shoot and say, hey, we have the possibility of playing big Yeah. Because yeah. Neville, we've got the family house. Right. Just so right. 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 And if you can make the course an amphitheater type style, you get a tournament like that, you immediately yeah. jack the reputation yeah. off of this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. see the possibilities there. So those right, greens. This, yeah. Yeah, I must say. Uh, Okay, this move. Let's We're going to walk 12 first. Okay. We're talking about the uh, walk of June. Wait, sir. That's the last few yeah. If you've got a cart path and you just mound one mound, sometimes it covers 50 yards. Jim and I had a long discussion about that. that is, uh, but isn't this spectacular? Gee. He must have done a bit of moving and good. Yeah, on this one. Yeah, just a little bit. Hey, Hartley, is this not, a, is this not unbelievable? <laughs> This what do you see seven? <laughs> <laughs> Look at sand, the green grass, the rugged looks where we've made the cuts, right. and the lakes, and all these things. You just, you it just will turn you on. <laughs> Thank you. You got about uh, T70, T70 out for that. Yeah. That's like, that's just the key though. That's yeah. Okay, yes. Okay. Where are we standing? Right here now. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so it's a slight dog leg. Right. Yeah. Okay. Slight dog leg. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's take a walk, guys. Take your cars down. Yeah, it's fun to Is that awesome? I told you. That is awesome. <laughs> Leonard, Jeff. Come and have a look at this. three Gary's <laughs>
What you got to... are going to hold out. I'll tell you something. Would we be better off trying to beat could, them to the I other side? I could drive you over there and you could walk right across that dam and shoot up at them. We'll be standing up on a TV on the street. That's exactly what we want to do. Right. You see them? Oh. I bet they walked over to uh, number 13T. Probably what they did. You've uh, just played it. Oh, <laughs> you played it. A hell of a sensational hole down there, four five. And now what will really make this hole is the way you put your, your rock stream across the, the front there. And what you do on the back here is really going to make this hole. Really going to make this hole. Just, uh, it's just, it's just too good to believe. It's just too good to believe. And with those trees getting more oxygen now, Leonard, they're getting more oxygen. They'll grow like hell. Yeah, that'll look very nice. Put some colour up on that thing. Ha, 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 ha.
So you would have come out at night and yeah, booed us. Yeah, you got down, I got out there to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <pretty drunk> <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the tee we right. stood on. Now we're going to walk this.
those rocks look lying there. Fantastic. See, to me, that just looks fantastic. That kind of, but you know, you with lots of fairway there. Yeah, there's lots. That's on the well on the side. Now, after you, so now your approach shot. Now, if you will go to left on your approach shot, you missed the green left. You are over the hill, gone. But then have a deep, look. This is a deep bunker that's going to run along the left side of the uh, This is my favorite hole. <laughs> now this, this, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, I. Can I write that down? Oh yes. Yeah, so far, this, course? so far, this is my favorite. Right. I've been staying, I've been staying out here for days. Of course, you know what I wish we could do. I wish we could, but I, I don't know whether you can or not. To me, if this was my property, I'd leave that whole mountainside plain bare. You can. But you cannot do it, because I know you're going to get that tremendous amount of erosion and wash away. But even the erosion, in fact, if this was my property, I'd go and create erosion there before it happens. I'd take, you know what we did at the Lost City? We did at Lost City Golf Club? And that's one of the five best golf courses in the world, please believe me. We, yeah, you're going to have it. It's going to happen. Even with the road, you're still going to have it. It's going to wash. It is. But that mixed in with the wildfire, it's not good. Imagine the wildfire is 67 You know, we created this erosion on the sides where this little stream came down, and then this beautiful green grass goes right up to the edge of the fairway, and you stand here and you see all this brown erosion right there. Contrast. Secret. Contrast. Look at these trees. Look at these trees through here. I mean, this is just... You know, I, I find it hard to believe what we saw here, though. Um, I mean, isn't... Can you, can you am standing on that tee and hitting off this tee? Hello. Joe, you son of a bitch. Why did you tell me not to bring my... You dropped your pit. Yeah, man, I would love to hit a ball. Do it next time. Woo! Okay, look at this team. I mean, that's, I mean, this is awesome. <laughs> 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 Gary, we're going to throw you around that leg. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at this also now for a teacher. Oh, this, and then there's another one where that concrete structure is. I mean, for a, a guy to stand here and he wants to carry it over the... Oh, that's be interesting to know how, how far that plays. Yes. What do you... Give me the, the stake there from here. I could carry on a, on a sunny day, I could stand here and I could hit a four iron right over this corner. Because I could hit a three iron of this level uh, 200 yards. And that stake has got to be, what, 40 yards past the edge of this drop? Now, Joe, you really got to think of this. I mean, this, you've got something here that is, is so phenomenal. You've really got to, you've got to use this rock. Hell, you've got to use this rock well. Even just, I, I don't know whether it would hold there, you know, you've got to think about when it gets wet and slide, but if you could put a little piece on this corner here. Yeah, that's last thing you know, too. Just in there. Yeah. You know, that would be great. Uh, uh, no, just not, well, it'll be but, but not we'll above. Yeah, you know, yes, not above yeah. the fairway, right. so not on there. the fairway. Just so it looks it's like it looks like it's touching it's the fairway. Right. You know, um, that'll be somebody to line up uh, a line too. Yeah. yeah um, see, I too many people take the rock and they always want to put it flat. You see how the other piece is standing up there? Yeah. I like that. I just don't like it to be uniform. I like it to be the most weird shape. That's what Sedona. That's why they get the tourists. The people go there. They cannot believe the the weird shapes of these mountains, and they red. Oh, this, this is quite awesome. Jack, you don't have enough rock for this hole. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yes. Wireless microphones, for God's sake, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, gee. Oh. Gary, you have caught yourself a well, golf course. Yeah. It's better than what we would have had with the, with the shotgun. This is a golf course. Yeah, yes, I mean, uh, Ooh, I see what you mean, making Palm Springs look like a shit house. Yeah, yeah. He said, now we're sitting at breakfast. I said, now, yeah. he, he's so enthusiastic, and I'm dying to get out here. And he says, I said, just tell me, how it is a computer so Palm Springs? PR person's PR person. Because I think Palm Springs is a hell of a ball. When you think what we did out of a plain, flat basin, he says it makes it look like a shit house. <laughs> I mean, this is... <laughs> What he say? You know, you know what I what I love about this tree. He he stood on the tee to look what these trees look like. Can you, um, Leonard, look at this for the look? At, that's what this used to be like. Where we're standing, Leonard, down there. And let me tell you, Leonard, every golf course we built in Japan. Nearly every single golf course we've done, we've had to do this on every single... It's very common to move two million yards. What's down there? This is a big, giant valley. It goes way down. I mean, they don't have ground. They do not have any ground. They have to go in the mountains because their ground is used for food. And only 16% of their country is arable. Yeah. But isn't this... This is... This is... Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Oh, well, you've got to be lucky with the piece of ground you have. you really got to be lucky in life when you want to do a redevelopment. Now, Lena's telling me he's got all this elevation and beautiful trees. He's got to be at the river. The river's about five minutes wide. Where are at? It looks like a river. We got three big paintings. Beautiful colour of the tree changing. Oh man, that is great. Hey, but hey, Joe, Joe, look at that rock. Now, just look at that rock. Now that, that is classic. The way that's standing. Roger, how are you? Nice to meet you. Gee, it's a pleasure to see you. All this wonderful work that's being done out here by everybody. How many, tell me, We're just, just gonna this think, down. no, think a minute. How many holes do you ever play in golf? We're extending the carry by doing You're extending the carry by leaving it there? That's what I'm saying. So what's wrong with that? You're playing from 100 feet up in the dam here. Ray Charles, I say, can get it across there. Look at this. I can hit a wedge. I can hit a, I can hit a, a nine iron from there to here. A nine iron, man. That's why you're a pro golfer, we're not. I'd no, but you see, you've got to take, you've got to, what you've got to do, you cannot compromise. No. Sometimes you, when you've got something that's great, like this, you don't compromise. But then it's somewhat just a little bit short, and this will have to be kind of like a But wait a minute, what happens if you had a lake here? What do you do, give them a free drop? No, 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 but that's why the lake's busted. No, 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 don't talk about that. What about other holes, this distance from a tee, which is not unfair, to have a lake that you've got to carry over? What happens if the guy knocks it in the lake? You give him a free drop? No. He's gone. At least here he can play it. Now, hang on a minute. Let's just give it a talk. You see, Joe. No, I think that's one of the great features. I really believe, and let's debate it. I believe this is one of the great features that you play onto a, onto a fair... Joe, think, where do you have any golf courses, man? Every place you go to, you've got a flat fairway, flat fairway, flat fairway. Here and now think about this when you plant this ridge here if you plant this only okay two, i see what you're saying i hear what you're saying okay, let me just let me do this though. you see that path right there yeah that's very 
That's your, that's your cartridge. Yes. At least let me bring some material out so I can hide that and work the path. No, I don't understand. You're not making sense. Come on. Yes. <laughs> you don't want to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. <laughs> Go on. Um, see, if we move this over, then, yeah. then the front path looks like it, it fits better. You know what I'm saying, Jim? Why can't off. you bring that card part? If you want to do that, bring that card part right here. If that's what's working. Well, I'm not sure what you're getting. I know. I'm not sure either. He just I follow. Walked him. I follow. He's saying with the shelf. Don't forget the plateau. Who, who, uh... I know. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to help you out. Here. No, there's not even a debate on this, <laughs> yes, Jeff. There is. Jeff, yes, there is. the whole that's thing. You're worried, you're worried about the card pad? Worried, no, I'm worried about. It. I'm trying to get the distance. I want another. Ten. Oh, baloney, baloney. <laughs> Yeah, I want to get that over this shelf. I want to carry this material. If you were playing off, if your T was not elevated, I'd say you got, but Joe, you got something here. You've got a great feature and you want to destroy it. I'm surprised at you. Uh, no, 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 no. This, this is the same feature. It just moved out. It just it moved the same look. Just... So you want to bring all this stuff here. You're not talking about lowering this, you're going to keep it the same no, height? No, same height, but it just moves over to there. Where are you going to get all that stuff there? Yeah, well, there's all kinds of material. No, we have, we have the dirt. Okay, so in other words, what you're going to do, let's compromise. Okay, same, same height, we just you're move it You're going to then, instead of having a straight, yeah, you're going to move this back there, okay? Right, same look, but it's just going to be over there. It'll be still elevated. I'm really sorry we didn't bring my golf club, because if I stood there, if I stood there and hit a 9-iron over here, then you, you're going to believe me. And I know none of you believe me that I can stand there with a 9-9 and hit that ball over the Here's all I'm saying. Here's the, you see the, you, you let see. me ask you, first of all, do you believe me I can stand on that tee and hit a 9-9 here? Yeah. From that tee? Yeah. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, okay, you see the stake? Yeah. So you got 50 yards, so yeah. you got to carry it. You got a football field here. Right, that wide, wide. It's the widest fairway I've ever seen in my life, right? <laughs> <laughs> is it always an nice, Jerry? <laughs> yeah, well, is it or isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's, let's make me lose space here, Bob. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot of lots. <laughs> <laughs> tell him, tell him, dog. Yeah. Okay, you got it. Okay, from he uses the word yeah. generous, I use gaping. <laughs> <laughs> from that tee to here, you've got 150 yards. Huh. I think the thing that you're you all looking at is the intimidation factor. I think you've got that water there. I think you've got that trouble on the left. You're about 130. I just think that you're right. No, no. I think you're right. You know what? I can hit a wedge from there to here. Hey, Joe. No, you can't. But you know you're going to get the wedge every time. No, but what's the chances we can get our health standing here? Yeah. Because I want lots of here. Yeah. You're right. I can have five iron. No, that's not the same thing. Of course you can. You know, there's nothing can. And you've got, <laughs> you got a football field to hit it in. That like doesn't even concern me. Joe, yeah. listen, I'm right. always... A lot of exposure I'm, here. I'm always... A lot of exposure. Yeah. I'm always very concerned when it comes to anything that might be... Do you know how I am? If it might be difficult for that little old lady or that man... we're going to bring all the trains out here. We're going to shoot these. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot those teeth. I'm gonna shoot that teeth. Let's see what the carry is to here. Okay, that's right. But Joe, you're talking about from the the, the members back tee. That's what worries you. No, I'm that's just the worst thing. Is that's a ridiculous. Yes. Yeah, okay. Which is it, what's worrying you now? Yeah. I just it, think. Yeah. It'd be nice to get picked up one up. I can hide the path over there. Or you can use some rock. Rock. Get to the work. What about as I don't a want to play some rock. What about as a, <laughs> as a <laughs> Why not? Gee, you guys are sadistic now. What happened to you? <laughs> Up in Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I tell you, man, if you've got a hundred and thirty, I can take, I can stand here today with a wig. Say, well, you stand on the tee there, the, the, the average member's tee, the middle of the fairway, so guys said you drive it right over that rock. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's nice. Gotcha. And then you put another rock on that corner for a guy who's going to take the long try, and you say, well, if you want to take this tiger line, you go over that rock. Okay, gotcha. You want to shorten all the way over that rock on the left control. No coming so. into it, it so that you're going to get that right. Right. The soft no. look. We don't want, we're not going to get real soft. Inviting look here and, and there, it's more yeah. different. Yes. Right, exactly. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's a stronger that, face. That that's a strong, right. strong look over that's here and a softer look anyway. over you're here. You're going to have to yes. anyway with it. Yeah. And I think, I really, the two places that so far I feel very, very strongly about it. The first thing you do when you get on 13, you think, 
go first. Because I know what it looks like right there. Right, I know. This is a, this is a bit plainish. You the know, block. You, yeah. you don't see the sand trap. Right now. You know, yeah. And you don't see the green in the bunker and the rock in the stream. Right. You know, so what you plant at the back of that hole is important. And what you plant on this bank because this is unique. You play very few holes where you have a band. And this is what I wanted to do at Lost City and Full Jacobs never did it and today I'm sick. What you plant, what you, you this, I mean, where are you going to get a hole like this? Let's take advantage of it and put some good colour. Okay. What they, along that bank, okay. with that rock sticking in there. That'll be nice. So, is this, are these lots up here? Okay. You've got to build, I think, a longish tree. Yeah, it is. You see? It, um, see how long that green is? Now that green is uh, from here to the end. It's like we're at. Yeah, 6,600 square feet. 6,600 square feet. Then a bunker will be. Uh, cool on, Around this hole, around this hole, because you've got to make this bunker in close to the green. You've got to be touching that green, hugging that green. Okay, yeah, that's just over here. I just want to catch one. Really. That's your catch bunker. Yeah, the, the feature bunker, yes. yeah, there'll be a, There's only one. Close on that green. There's only one. There's a pipe on the flash that bend Oh, I think you need more. I think you need uh, But see, I want this the bend Because that green sets up like this, and there's all the shit over there. Well, let's go and see what Okay, okay. okay. I just don't want to miss something on this. No, I don't. I know. Gary, I'd love to just walk this. Okay. Now, how are we doing for time? I'll pull the front up here. No deep bunker. No, not in the front. Not at all down the left side. Nothing on the left side. Nothing down the left side. You want the bunker on the right side. You're getting audio. Yeah, you're getting audio. Yeah, you're getting audio. Yeah, you're getting audio. 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 The green sitting in, you know, sitting in these rocks. The guy who hooks the shot and he hits them down to it. Anything you gotta make a little bit of it. You don't 
something here that very few people have done, and that's this. Look at this rock we're standing on. But just a plain pile. Well, you don't leave that like that. No, I'm saying we there bring the dirt bring up that, in here. You bring those rocks in here. You, you take those and throw them in here so that it looks kind of tidy yeah. around the edge. Yeah. Yes, it looks tidy around the edge. Yeah, okay. But I mean, you see what I like? What I like, as those rocks are lying there now, then you just keep piling on top there all the time. Make that one massive, and then you put your grasses, you take a bit of soil and go and put it in there, and you put your grasses in there. So this green actually sits down. Really, you've got, if you're playing from down with that stake, you've got a damn wedge. If you've got your green in there and you hit out there with a the wedge, nobody can beat you about that. You're no. giving him plenty of room. No, I know that. There's a lot of that. But now you have your green round here, and I want to see the pro pin placement right near the rocks. Very, the more you've I'm got here, clean, the better. So you cannot have enough. I promise you, you cannot have enough here. Yeah, the reason why I'm using the phone. This has got to be Rock City, man. Instead of you. I found if I hold the antenna I mean, the you right really way, I, just want to come out here. I act as an and antenna. And I can get his audio. But you see, right up that bank there. And also, for people who've got a house, a house on there, do you know what it looks like when you look out on the screen of the rock? It enhances that property, man. In here? Yeah. Sand, you mean to take them? Oh, we lost them again. No. Oh, maybe I left it. By just leaving that like that, I don't know. Now, if we wore some dirt back up into that, in places, and, and you saw it. Well, when they see that, I think that will en enhance your sale. You want to see it? Right away. Not, there's not, there's not nearly enough back there. That looks, that will look crap. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then sand put in the little, little pockets. Put in the little pockets. take some pictures and send them to you of Sedona and Arizona. <laughs> well, you'd say, hey, listen, man, that's, that. a man, a man like did that. that. I promise you, a man has never... Like this rock here? This rock? That would be sticking right on, the, be right resting on this ledge here. Yes, that's it. I can tell you from experience, I can tell you from experience that if you do that properly, that rock is done properly, and you have your grasses and your little bit of soil put in there and everything, and when the green, the green is there and the bunker and the softness of the feather, I can give you my word that enhances the property's value. It's 
never failed yet. Now, unless you've got some crazy nut who comes here who hates rocks, it can happen, but then you take him to another lot. But I can tell you, you've got a house up there, and you look down on this green, this is going to be one of your prime spots of that lake, and these trees and those views at the back there, and these rocks is going to be one of your prime views. Yes. Okay. Okay. Maybe a way. Okay. Stand up. Just creating. No, no. Hey, come. Everybody was saying it. Rock. Okay. Yeah. Then we're gonna go to ten and watch ten. Stage. Let's have the res let's reserve the rights okay. to put in a bunker here at a later stage. Okay. Okay. Good, uh, shake grassy hollow. Grassy yes. right. yeah. Gary was just saying that you've just played something that's very rugged. Nine is a tough hole, Jeff. Good job. My very tough. Uh, let's reserve the rights. Let's not have bunkers here. That's we'll our initial. As such, but we'll go over it in grass. I like this. It's up with it. I think this is a yeah. I think this is a phenomenal. Yeah, houses all the way up there. Well, this is the one we just walked down the center line. It just flowed around real yeah. nice. Yeah. 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 The yeah. housing blocks with this house here. The way it's set up. That's the way that you could have a dream. You have a good land. There's such a beautiful golf course, but they put the damn houses right on the fairways, and it's just really the course. It's just rooting it, and they don't really care because the man that owns it lost a lot of money there. He's got a bad guy working there, rocking. And um, it's very, very unique. The, the, the lots that you've got here are very unique. Once they've had heavy houses up there, very, very unique. I'm just saying, Tom, you don't find many places. All the place you would, you don't find any place with it. Lots. We're going off around the tree because of the change in right. elevation coming off the tree. Uh, that pass is going to be up on a hill, though. Okay. All right. Okay. Hey, uh, what do you want to stop on nine or just... Uh, let's just drive. Can we get across nine? Let's get across. Let's just drive nine. There's really not a lot to see. And then I want to walk ten. I just like to get a feeling on nine. Yeah, so you get a feeling. You want to stop at ten T? Yes. Okay. Just drive all the way through that. Go up on the road. Next to ten T. Well, I think he wants to get something with us on the truck now.
good. That's good. Woo, I tell you, that's a... Thank you. Pardon? Uh, no, I'm playing in, um, in New York. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Been out there all morning, I tell you, I'm ready. Sorry, so hungry. New diamonds. Oh, thank you. That's nice. That's a beauty. I'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful thing about this, man. That's really nice. That's not a signature hat. That's your signature hat. That's for you to wear on tour. <laughs> there you, go. you want me to get fired from my club? Can we get a little drink here? How are you? you a tennis lesson and you give her a little golf lesson. I think it's an interesting little shape. So, I love that. Of course, all part of the IMG family. Well, it's good to have IMG. Mm -hmm. to, um, They're very nice people. Being a great oh. yeah, this morning. Yeah, in fact, I told, I told Joe to write his name down and write him a letter and thank him because athletes never, ever write and thank TV guys. I mean, they do a hell of a favor. Yeah, they give giving this place all this plug. Now, if you write him a note, he's going to keep writing. Absolutely. You know, because he's going to get such a shock when he gets a note. The guy say, thank you very much for plugging it. That he'll do some more for us. Oh, that's great. And John was out here this morning from the TV station. He's so high on this place. He is so high on this place. He bought it out. He said he's definitely getting a membership. Oh, yeah. So that's a big deal. Yeah, he's uh, disappointed he couldn't come last night. Penguins, all sorts of stuff came. Remember when I called her? Yeah. Coaching. Yeah. Let's tell the story. Yes, I, I know said, what the answer is. I said, hell no, Carl. I'm going to ask you the chance. Now we're sending the chance. How about joint? How about something? It worked out well. Well, thank God, because they canceled us and we'll good. Goodbye. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. not here. We were thinking, like, to try to compete against each other was stupid because nobody would end up being anywhere. And we're thinking, well, that's silly. I said, well, we could create a heck of a story if we could all together, but he changed his cast. Thank you very much. I yeah. said that you were coming in. They said there was no point in competing. That's what they thought. Oh, really? You got the pen? I do. I got oh, the hand. Oh my god, yes. Right now. Okay. I got an opportunity. I'm ready. I, yeah, oh my god. I, don't know. I, never I was born ready. ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Oh, well, it's nice, you know, it is nice today is the, the opportunity we have now. Oh, I need to get Kevin. Get out of the truck and meet all those big machine guys. That's another thing. Very important. I'm, I'm surprised. Uh, they can take the time. Like you are very strong. Uh, there are very few agents. Tom, get that sandwich in the pressure. Very good pressure. Do the same how are you, Tom? How are you, sir? Thank you. How are you doing today? Hi, Tom. How are you? My pleasure. Well, we had a last night. I got to know the answer to this story. About Colin Hogan. Did you ever call Colin Hogan? Oh, boy, that's true. Is that a true story? Go call Mr. Dunlap? Yeah. That's true. I was sitting in bed last night knowing I'm possibly going to meet you there. There's a very player called Dan Hogan. What club are you using? Well, Mr. Dunlap. Well, go call Mr. Dunlap when you've got a problem. <laughs> True story, huh? True story. And when the press said to him, is that what you said? He said, oh, well, I was only joking. But he never joked. Yeah, that's what I understand. Is that right? Never joked, huh? Amazing. Really hilarious, really.
I guess I'm not telling you when Yes, I think the routing plan is very important too. I think the balance, there's so many things that go into it. The balance of the golf course, how you construct, where you cut, where your housing pads are. You know, if you want to get people to spend money, you've got to just, you can't just go out there and build a monument to yourself. It's a combination of everything put together. And uh, you look at some of those housing spots sitting down there, looking down, you know, great views all the time, on lakes, on rocks, on, you know, sensational trees. I mean, it's just, I must say, I, uh, I it's one of the very best we've done. One of the, I just say to, to Joe, the one that you've got to be careful of, excuse me, is having a golf course, it's so great. But you know, with X amount of them right to the end. You don't want people to come in and say, gee, I played 16 great holes, great holes. But hell, they went to sleep on two of them. Yeah. It's very easy to fall into. It sure is, yeah. There's a, there's a course up in the Brookline, Massachusetts, they read the uh, Brookline Country Club. Yes, which I've played many times. Yeah, and uh, I think they brought in Jack. Have you been there since he's moved out of No. He talked about going to sleep. He came in and redid the holes. He was so out of care. He just could not believe it. Just changed the whole character. It just changed the whole character. It's a pity because it had a certain European old tradition. I, I'm very much afraid. I don't like going in and, and, and renovating. We got a, a couple of courses of said that I've turned it down. Because Down. It's just so our routing plan, which we've done over and over and over and over again, which we don't normally do. The clubhouse got changed, the side of the clubhouse, so you've got to reset that again. But uh, the bumping is so good, you've got great balance, you've got great rock, you've got great trees. You know, we did a course in Palm Springs, it was an $11 million uh, dollar job. That's what we played. That's what we played, which is, was named in the top 10 new golf courses in the country. But you just couldn't do that. You couldn't have these trees. They, they, they putting every tree they can possibly get. It cost you a hundred million to do what you got here. That's one of the good things about yeah. Western Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. So it's probably it's quite important for the new type of this project. I'm, I'm from Orange Your Place at Hilton Head National, which is good. And I also flew down to Aliquot to play that. Oh, did you play Aliquot? Yeah, I played Aliquot. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you live at Aliquot? Yes. I thought I you lived at number three. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was the most well, difficult golf course we've ever well. had. Yeah, All 130, that was the cut. Are you, getting, are you getting those homes built back there where they brought in the builders from California and call it the Street of Dreams? Street of Dreams. Street of Dreams. You heard about this? Uh, they got this one street where I guess they went out and got the builders from California. And you know, the big. Yes. You know, that owner took quite a beating at first, you know, because uh, what he did was he went into these high-end homes. Well, first of all, the first man who was there took him for another ride, which was a shame. And he put all his faith in this guy. That's really set him back. But he's a very, very wealthy man, extremely wealthy, so he can carry it. But uh, the homes didn't sell very well at first. High-end homes, you know, if I started of course, I'm not going to go for those multi-million dollar I remember that big house when it was like hell. The chances of selling are just limited. I mean, there's only maybe 4% of the market. Maybe not even that high. But uh, now they're selling very well. They've only got about another 56 lots and they've sold out. And they have got a big piece of ground. But, um, I knew they were struggling for a while. But he's an extremely wealthy man, so he gets away, he can help him. But it's, it's sad, you know, when you, you go into a place, you put all your faith in a man, and then he takes you for a ride. Yeah. 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 It's terrible. Really terrible. Is that the right on there? No, it was one of, one of his partners. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, it's, uh, it's coming along. No, no, they got another guy. Right. But if they, they'll be able to recoup. If they uh, do the other golf course, 
uh, houses between 250 and 600, they'll sell them very quickly. It's a magnificent piece of land. But we're real pleased to way our flows from here. This year we have almost uh, 30 uh, contracts ready to go, and that was coming up one house. I'm people are buying. I know both of the we did, uh, had the course, but there was no clubhouse. And people played there and loved the place. They would not buy a membership until that clubhouse was there. So when I heard that you'd already done some sales, I was very impressed. They did a play for us too. They sold out memberships there. They were like $75,000. I was there such a need for a lot of people. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was very surprised to hear what he said every day. I, you know, people are really reluctant to do that. They want to see it first. You know, I don't blame them. So, if anybody who knows anything about golf, if they come and have a look at it. We have, uh, we have a very good team. We're, you should. We're you very should. proud to be uh, with, uh, with the player, uh, the player team also. Mutual. We all, we all, all be a good team. You know, one of the things we just did, Tom, we went out and shook the hand of the bulldozer operators and things like that. Very important to thank them for their work that they do. It goes a long way. One of the designers just expected that. Like we're getting their names and some autographed pictures and a few golf balls and things like that. How many, how many courses right. do you have yeah. to exactly. Starting in the midst of and finishing 14, 44. We're doing a lot of golf courses in Asia. Three in mainland China. I've got to tell you, we arrived here in mainland China. <laughs> one of the courses that some guy did there, I don't know who did it, one of the, they done the irrigation and they turned the irrigation upside down. It was out of the ground instead of in the ground. <laughs> but uh, the, we thought, well, the people that I was speaking to, they said the first 160 memberships they thought would come from Hong Kong. All 160 came from this particular town in China. And they haven't even moved one bit of dirt yet. $25,000 US dollar membership. Here's some fascinating stories. Uh, club I did in Japan. <laughs> Guy wanted us to have a look at it. Right on top of the mountain that had to do dynamite, had to move, I would say, two and a half months ago. Last picture didn't turn out too well. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe us look at each other. Tell us when you're ready. Alright, here we go. didn't come out? Why? Bad photographer. Okay. Thank you. The progress of being shot. I'm getting a yeah, 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 have been done. Uh, yeah. Pretty much done. Yeah. 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 This is in progress. Right? These are in progress. These, These are ones in shape. And the whites are in the It's clear. It's clear. It's clear. It's clear. No problem. No problem. group that we've been waiting for has shown up, so uh, why don't we get started. Uh, for those of the members of the media and any of the other guests, uh, my name is Al Dudrick and I'm with DDF&M and I'm substituting for Joe Tarquinio because uh, the Caldwell Banker has their name all over here. I wouldn't want to stand in Joe's light. He's a little shorter than I am anyway. Uh, but welcome to uh, Diamond Run and thank you all for coming. You'll notice that uh, Marianne Miller of our place had the uh, weather arranged. Dion fought for yesterday, but we fought for today. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, a few people, uh, just so you become acquainted. I'm sure some of you know them already. 
but the four uh, gentlemen who are most responsible for Diamond Run, uh, it's a little hard to see them, they're not all in one place, but Dion McMullen, right here, Gary Scheffler, the worker in the back with the black hat, Tom Niss, Tom's right here. And uh, I, I can't find, oh, there he is, <laughs> Mr. Harley King. Uh, we also have three of the members of the marketing team from Caldwell Banker. As I said, Joe Tarquinio is not here, but he's in charge of uh, Diamond Run Development. We have Ann Stoddard. Is it, there she is. John Posterio. Posterero. Excuse me, John. <laughs> Virginia Scherter. Virginia. And of course, Jerry Stone is in charge of the golf memberships and so forth. Jerry's right here. Uh, we have two gentlemen from uh, uh, Gary Player Design. Actually, I think we have four, but I'm going to introduce uh, Jeff Myers, who's Vice President of Design. Jeff is right there. By the way, uh, the, uh, his original heritage is Steubenville, Ohio. We have Joe Duco, that was right here. Had a beautiful story the other day in the paper. Uh, Joe's from Weirton, West Virginia. So you can see we have a close tie. <laughs> and a fellow that we've worked with for a long time, uh, Jim Applegate is president of Gary Player Design. Jim, uh, I have to tell you one fast story. When we first started working with Jim, he said, I'll send you up a whole kit of information about Gary Player, everything that Gary has ever done in his entire life. And I was looking through it, and it says Gary Player, golf course designer, Gary Player, championship golfer, and so forth. And I kept going through it, and the one folder said Gary Player Stud. And I thought that was an interesting thing. <laughs> so, uh, without holding everybody up, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Joe and Gary, and uh, Gary is just going to comment about the course, and then I'm sure he'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Mr. Gary Player. Well, Al and ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I just say, you know, I think Diamond Run is a most appropriate name, because this place is really a polished diamond. Uh, you know, it's exactly a year since we first came here and walked uh, through the woods. And it really is, you know, being a rancher myself, this is like a mini miracle to come back here and see what's transpired in one year. And there are many people to thank. I mean, uh, all the Diamond Road Associates are not only hard workers, but great enthusiasts. And as Vincent Peale said, enthusiasm is one of the great essences of life. And it really is, because without enthusiasm, you cannot get team spirit and get things done at the pace that we all like to do it. And also to Wadsworth, who are really professional people who've had a lot of experience in this business. We're delighted to have them with us. And I can say to the bankers, you can go to sleep at night because I'm sure this place is going to sell out well. <laughs> Fortunately, <laughs> I said it with my hands and fingers crossed. <laughs> But you know, there's an old saying, <laughs> quality without compromise. And if you, if you have quality in life, you cannot go wrong. And when I say this, and I sincerely mean this, you know that I've seen a lot of golf courses being involved in a lot right now, starting, finishing, and ending up with, we're doing a lot of golf courses. We've done well over 120 worldwide, and have had a lot of experience in different kinds of terrain. And this one here is going to rank with any one that I've seen. And this is going to be, I really believe this sincerely, this is going to be one of the great golf courses in the United States. I really believe that. Uh, of course, we're blessed with the terrain. We're blessed that we have uh, a man like Joe Duco, who's put his heart and soul into this place with great enthusiasm. He was saying this morning at breakfast, you know, I couldn't even swallow my cereal. I had to get up there eating a banana and walking out of the room to come here. He couldn't get here quick enough, which is so great. But he said, isn't this terrific to be competing against Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicholas?" I said, yes, it is, because Arnold, Jack, and I competed as great friends, but as great competitors on the golf course for many years. And we're doing the same thing in golf design, and we're doing the same thing in manufacturing golf clubs. And I think 
This is what's made this great country, America, the country it is. The word competition. We all thrive on it. It makes you have a greater quality. It makes you work harder. And it gives you a sense of achievement. I'm delighted to be here and go around this morning and have the opportunity of meeting some of the people that are operating these big machines. These people are putting their heart and soul into it as well. It takes a great team event. You can never say, well, so-and-so deserves the credit. It's a great team event, and this is what we have here. There's a great atmosphere. I tell you one thing, if you don't like this, you don't like peaches and cream. And, uh, uh, I just like uh, any questions that you have about the golf course that you'd like to ask us. We'd be delighted to uh, answer anything. Um, you know, I think of a golf course we did down in Palm Springs. And I couldn't help but thinking of that this morning. And when they gave us this piece of ground, it was as flat as that table and the same color. <laughs> Just like that. And today you go there and you see all these elevations that have been created and all these waterways and waterfalls and, uh, and the desert and all the flowers and trees that we did. And it was a job that cost about 11 million. Now this job here is not going to cost that. But if you had to take these beautiful trees and just work out, and you know, I, I, I suppose my brother being an environmentalist makes me feel and lean towards his thinking very much. And it's a very important word in the world today. But these trees, how do you ever put a price on these trees? How do you ever put a price on this natural terrain and elevations you have here? You're talking about a hundred million dollars. I don't know how you put it in terms of dollars, but this is something that we can go on our hands and knees, at least the owners here can go on their hands and knees and say they found a piece of ground here that is definitely unique because we've built golf courses in top mountains in Japan. When you go to Japan and build a golf course, only 16% of the country is arable. Now you drive and now once you feel that car tilting at this angle, you know you've got a, a funny piece of ground. So you go right at the top of this mountain and the man wants you to build a golf course and he says to you, is this the best piece of ground you've ever seen? Because everybody thinks their own ground is the best. <laughs> and you say, well, it's a very nice piece. You know, you've got to be diplomatic about it. The best of its kind I've ever seen. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, then you work out the uh, exorbitant prices, uh, you know, costing like $30 million. And then you have to tell the owner this. And he says, oh, very happy. And I say, me also, very happy. <laughs> As I was saying to Tom uh, a little while ago. And then you say, well, now you're really concerned about your client because how is he going to make this a viable proposition? And he says, oh, no, membership already sold out. And I can tell you this, and this is not a one iota of exaggeration. If you took this place where we're standing right now and with the quality of this golf course, I cannot guarantee that you're going to have a greenkeeper who's going to keep this in the greatest of condition. But that is something that's very important. We can provide you with a golf course, but if you've got to have that man who knows his job to continue on once we've finished, in other words, he's got to follow through. But if you took this, as I envisage, in perfect condition, to be a member of this golf course, you couldn't be a member of this golf course in Japan for between one and two million dollars. And that really makes you think that you can come out here and you can buy yourself a prime lot for $80,000 and be a member for $17,000. Man alive, I tell you, I don't know where you can get better value than that. It's fantastic. We are proud to be associated with everybody here and we'll continue to give it our very best and make you very proud. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions anybody would like to ask? We are very free. Uh, Gary, the holes you saw shaped uh, this morning is they, uh, along the lines that you had planned and has it exceeded uh, what you had envisioned? Yes, it's much better. You know, it's much better than I thought. I mean, it's actually... Uh, it's almost like a miracle, as I say, being a rancher and having worked uh, with big machinery and, um, and having a, um, a stud farm, as Al said, and I'd like to say something about that, Al. <laughs> but you come here and you stand here and you see this mountain in front of you like this, and you say, and then you see this valley going down there, and then you see today you go there and they've moved 180,000 cubic yards of soil on one hole, and you see this magnificent hole in amongst these rocks and trees. And the, the, the satisfaction that I personally get, you see, uh, I'm a great environmentalist, but I think that 
um, we also got to enjoy the environment. The public have got to enjoy it. And for me, the great satisfaction I get, yes, I've won all the world's titles many times. And I've won them on the senior tour, and I've been blessed as far as a talent that has been loaned to me, as I said at one of the breakfasts we had here. But I think the thing that gives me great satisfaction, that when this is finished, and this applies to everybody, this whole team, they'll all walk away and say, well, we've contributed a little bit along the way. Yes, we've made some money, but we've contributed, and we've given millions of people over X amount of years to come great pleasure. And I think that's something that I love, and I say thank you to God every day about my business. I can go out there and play, and you can have 50 million or 100 million people see you win the Masters and give them pleasure from China to Africa to America. And this is one of the things about this business, that you create something and you take a piece of ground and you enhance it. You make it better, you make it more beautiful, and people are going to enjoy it. And when I come out here today, it's like a miracle. Honestly, when you see that bush like that there, and then you, you try and envisage that hole, and then you see this beautiful hole. It's just uh, the people are going to enjoy it. It's fantastic. And Al, I want to tell you, you talk about a stud farm. You know, I've often said, if there is such a thing as reincarnation, I want to come back as a top stallion. <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of action going on out there, and uh, you can see by the green here, these are the holes that we've shaped already, and they very, very way above expectations. You know, and I, we've had a lot of experience in this, and it's very difficult for a, a layman to go out there and look at something and say, well, this is what it's going to look like. But it's looking far better at this stage. Now I can see the, the as I say, the polished diamond, the finished product, and I tell you what, it's going to be, it's not going to be good. It's going to be, I can guarantee you it's going to be sensational. What we've also tried to do, we've tried to make it, we've really taken Lady Golf uh, into consideration. It'll be a very tough championship golf course from 7,000 yards of the back tees. But we've really taken into consideration the little ladies that play the game and the elderly people that play the game that, to give them an opportunity to make it playable for them. There's nothing worse than going to a golf course and, you know, I get on a golf course and I have to hit a driver and a three wood to a par four and I cannot reach it. Well, straight away I say, well, this guy, you know, must have been trying to get even with golfers who ever designed this golf course. <laughs> and this is what happens to ladies. Ladies go out there and they hit a drive and a three wood and a wedge and it's a par four. They very con conveniently forget about those ladies. And those ladies are so important because they go home to their husbands, as we all know. And they tell you, look, I want to live there or I don't want to live there. And if she doesn't want to live there, you might like it, but you ain't going to live there. <laughs> and that's something I learned a long time ago. Very, very important. And I think it's also important when designing a golf course, not to design a golf course for what you see suits you or a monument to yourself. Try and look at it from a member's point of view. Do I want to live there? Is it a good practice facility? Is it a clubhouse that I can go along and enjoy myself with some of the guys? Has it got a nice cozy fireplace in it? Are the houses looking down on the proper views? Can you play the hole? Are the greens too undulating? Building a golf course involves a lot of thought. And uh, just on the routing plan on this golf course, which is quite unique, how many times have we rearranged the routing plan on this golf course? Fifteen. Fifteen times. Very, just to make sure that everything blends itself. And that's a very, very unusual thing to do. So a lot of thought and a lot of work does go into designing a golf course. Sir, did you make any modifications today that you think will enhance what you've already designed? No, I think everything today, we just, Joe and I had one little debate here. <laughs> but you know, I'm used to my son-in-law who's Italian, so you know, they talk with their hands, you know. And the steam comes out of the ears. <laughs> <laughs> we always compromise. We always compromise, yeah. It's a nice way of saying our lives. <laughs> First, to congratulate me because she knows she's going to get a piece of the action is my wife. <laughs> but before I let her kiss me, I said, tell me, would you like to swap your two for my one? <laughs>
But uh, uh, holes in one are an amazing thing. I've had three holes in one in the last six weeks. And my dad played for 40 years and was a two handicap and never had one. So, you know, uh, golf is a game full of surprises. Very humbling game and a, it's really the greatest game that man ever invented. I, you know, we played in this tournament last week with the NFL football players. And all these guys were my size when they were six, you know. They were big like this. And I thought to myself, playing with them, I thought, now, all these great athletes, but if you play for 10 years in their sport, you've had a long innings. And I couldn't help but looking at them, and every one of them had had an operation on their knee or their shoulder was being operated on or something had happened, and they, they got 10 years, and that's it. And here you find a man like Jerry Barber, 77, Sam Sneed, 81, and, um, and Gene Sarazen, 93, whatever he is, playing the game still. But these guys, uh, Sam Sneed and Jerry Barber, won uh, $30,000 each at the Legends this year for breaking their age two consecutive days. And these guys are playing. In fact, Jerry Barber shot 72-68 at the age of 77. The longevity in the sport is so fantastic, really. And if young people realize this, I know they play a lot more golf. Any other questions? Gary, how long did it take you when you sat down with the land you had to work with here to design this course? Or did the property remind you of any other courses you might have played or might have designed through the years? Well, this property reminds me very much of a golf course we did in Africa called Lost City. Uh, it's one of the most incredible golf courses I've ever seen, very similar to this. In fact, one hole we designed, we designed it in the, the green in the shape of Africa. And we put in red, white, and yellow, uh, red, white, and yellow sand. First time it was ever done. In fact, I like to do that. It's so attractive. It's becoming one of our um, logos, so to speak, uh, with owners that want it. And we put on the edge of the green, we put in a very big pond with two white beaches and 40 crocodiles. <laughs> and uh, we have a motto there, if you can't beat them, eat them. <laughs> and uh, you play from up in the mountain, and the strange thing is, as that ball hits that beach, if you hook it, that crocodile, one of them just, <laughs> they eat it. It's absolutely amazing to see this. And uh, you have a 200,000 acre game reserve, so you're standing here, and right there where this building is, you'll see a lion or an elephant. Right there, but of course they've got this massive fence. <laughs> and uh, quite exciting. So it's very much like this terrain. And so we've had a lot of experience in terrain like this, uh, which is a, a big advantage. It really is, because the way you set your greens, the way you set your greens in this kind of terrain is very important. If we were to take you out there now, where some of the greens haven't been uh, shaped yet, I mean, you just see a mountain looking at you, you wonder, well, gee, how the hang is this going to be a golf hole? Uh, it really is fascinating. It's, uh, it's a great sense of achievement to see things like that occur. And also, the way you set your greens in there and the way you do your bunkering, and as I say, uh, we've got a lot of holes that go downhill here. And our practice tee is superb because a practice tee is a very important part of golf. And everything is going downhill, which is terrific. Most of the holes go downhill except for a couple. So uh, I think the routing plan there has been very, very successful. Is there any hole that you like here the best or is one that you feel it might be your signature? <laughs> I, know uh, you, I know you're going to say what you're going to say. Is <laughs> <laughs> oh, there a compromise there? Well, we've got a hole here with a lot of rocks. In fact, <laughs> I love rocks, you see. I, I, I think one of the great secrets of golf architecture is contrast, <coughs> to have great contrast. And uh, we've cut in there with this 180,000, as I say, cubic yards of soil, made this big fill there, and you drive across this valley and this beautiful lake, and you see this big cut in the mountain, all the homes sitting right at the top there, and all these big boulders. And I just, I made a point of flying to Sedona uh, in Arizona recently. I wanted to convince myself, because everybody's always wanting to build everything uniform. And I went to Sedona, and you see, God did all that, and he did one of the greatest jobs in the world. And nothing was uniform. I mean, it was sharp, it was flat, it was round, and you saw rocks standing like this with rocks leaning on the top, and a city slicker would say, well, some crane went in there and put it there, but mm. only God did it. So you see, I like this rugged look and, uh, and contrast and uh, with white sand and, and high elevated tees and, and 
green trees and, and rugged mounds and things. And this is what we're getting here. We're getting this great sense of balance. So balance on a golf course is very important. Looking at the prevailing wind, etc., etc. But um, so which hole would that be? Uh, number seven. Uh, I, I would say, in my opinion, so far, number seven, mm -hmm. because you drive across onto a plat form uh, like Pine Valley type of fairway. You drive onto this plateau, and then you shoot up to the green with all these massive rocks. And we're going to try and put them in weird shapes. Uh, like God. You're like right. God. <laughs> 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 I think we need Billy Graham out here. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Bring him out. All the rocks are red. Yes, if you turn them around, yes. This would have to be number two, this is Yeah. That's a donor someplace. It's gorgeous there. There's red bronze. Yeah, it's some, that's a miracle. <laughs> but they don't have as nice as trees. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, that's about it, I guess. Well, thanks very much for coming. If any of you would like a tour afterwards, right now, um, Dion informs me there are several vehicles, and be happy to take anybody out. Thank you again for coming. Yeah. How are you? I walked on the course of the Oh, Coral Valley. Oh, you must, uh, was it, is Will Flanagan on your side? So I was doing sit ups in the gym this morning at 7 o'clock, and I'm doing sit ups there, and I'm working with the weights. And he comes on and he said that we were in town. So when you see me, you can go, really, if you started the plug. Okay. He's very kind of him, you know, I don't take that for granted. That was very nice. You know, I've been coming to Pittsburgh for a long time, since the late 50s, uh, and uh, played in the youth open and uh, tournaments in this area. And uh, I must say, I have never seen traveling around the United States like I do. Such an improvement in a city. It's cleaned up so beautifully. The highways are good. It's a beautiful area with all the magnificent trees. And I'm delighted to be uh, building golf courses in competition with Arnold and Jack here. I think competition is uh, one of the great uh, necessities in life. I think competition makes for perfection. And we've always competed against each other on the golf course. Always been extremely friendly for trying to do something better. And I think that's exciting. Well, I think I came in here originally in the beginning of the year and I said what they should do is when all three golf courses are finished, they should have a, a competition for the public, for golfers. I mean, this is something exciting, it's a nice format, and write into the press and say which one they enjoy the most. I think that would be fun. See, if the house is already built, it's season to design your course. And we do construction work. That's not a problem. What we don't do is fix 50 and 30. Yeah, that's, that's tough. Well, we try and build golf courses that are not too severe. You know, having played golf for a living, I found that uh, golf courses in the last 10, 15 years, the architects have made them very severe. And the average member finds it very difficult to handle. Not only the average member, but when you have these big undulating greens, even the pros have difficulty to handle them. So we go for greens that are not as undulating, not as severe. You see, the average golfer playing golf, he doesn't hit many greens. And when he does hit a green, he wants a chance to make a so I don't believe in punishment once they get to um, I believe you should have your punishment in your beauty. To have a course that is beautiful, because we're all busy, we're all on the go, the pressure's with us. We come out and you can play a golf course on a Saturday and Sunday that's beautiful. You go back to the office on Monday, recharge. And I think that beauty has a great effect on everybody. Well, in China, mainland China, we're doing three golf courses right now, which I find fascinating. Uh, all over Asia, Africa. Europe, all over the world, we've done over 120 golf courses in the entire world. Now,
Japan. Well, we built a lot in Japan. We probably built 14 in Japan. And we built them under the, a certain group of people that are very anti golf courses. And it's a shame because uh, I'm as much concerned about environment as anybody. When you build a golf course, that golf course stays there as a town. So what it really does, it gives people pleasure for thousands of years. You improve on the beauty, people enjoy it, and the average industrialist, if I may use that word or whatever the word may be, will not be. You always have uh, wetlands, and uh, we understand that, and uh, I think uh, we understand it 100%, and we go along with the environmentalists because you know, they're doing a job that is a necessity. Is a necessity. So we work hand in hand with all these people, all the very, very important. We never have any arguments with them, we go along with them, and sometimes we will give a little and then take a little. And uh, we even had one course in, uh, in a certain area where they had a, um, some birds, a special type of bird, a breed, and we couldn't go ahead with that. We had to reroute our whole golf course because of these few birds that were in this area, and we had respect for that. We had respect for that. See, we, we, we bring in bird life. When we finish the golf course, we increase the bird life, which to me is a very important thing. How many holes do you know? There will only be about two that will play uphill of any kind. The majority will be level to downhill, which is important. Seven will play up, is that correct? Uh, no, seven will be the other tier. Is the command and, uh, but our intention is, uh, if that happens, so be it. Uh, and if it's great enough, that'll be requested one day of some nature. But my main objective is a member, owner, get a return on your money, do a good job, quality without compromise. Yeah, definitely challenging. Oh, it'll be challenging enough to have uh, any talk. This will be challenging enough to have a US Open on it. And it'll be a good gallery course because of the terrain.